in platinum oxide. Okay, now let's uh, see what is another, what, let's see how this uh, reflects in the fuel cell operation, okay? I forgot my watch, so I don't know what time is it. What time is it, please? 420? Okay. Uh, okay, let's see, this is uh, now a typical uh, uh, plot for evaluation of a, a cell, including fuel cell. So here we report the voltage, and here we report the current. Why we are using these two parameters here? Because of, of course, the highest is the voltage, the better is in terms of energy. And the same apply for the current. Remember that energy is the product between voltage and current. Now, the, of a, the theoretical voltage of a, a fuel cell is exactly similar to the one for an for a electrolysis cell. So the voltage for this reaction, thermodynamic, is 123 volts. So in fact, you see that uh, for zero current, I mean, under equilibrium, we have 123 volts. <coughs> yeah, actually, actually, 1299 volts, okay, is 123. And this voltage is given by the next equation, and uh, this uh, voltage is 123 in a real condition when uh, <laughs> the partial pressure are 1. But as soon as we close the circuit, and we have to pass the current, then we have to, to, we go into the same problem that we discussed with the lithium battery. We will have some losses due to various effects. You see that immediately we have a loss here, and this is uh, <coughs> due to the, the, the kinetic loss. Means the, this, uh, it is due to this process that I mentioned to you, the absorption uh, the, the, the electrode processes. Then, of course, you have an electrolyte which has certain resistance, and this is, will be the, <coughs> the uh, ohmic loss. And then finally, you will have a maximum corner that you, that you can drive off. So, to make this uh, fuel cell uh, operating, you should reduce these losses. Because if you reduce these losses, the voltage will go higher, and you have higher energy. So you have to reduce this one, and then you have to use catalysts like platinum to do that. You have to reduce this one, so you have to use very high conductive electrolyte. And you have to reduce this, so you have to, uh, to use very large area electrons. In uh, fuel cell terminology, RR is, ref is referring to the kinetics of oxygen electrodes, and HOR is referring to the kin kinetics of hydrogen electrodes. <coughs> okay, this is uh, what is, I will just say, under open circuit condition, the cell voltage is at its maximum value, and uh, <coughs> this is given by the Nest equation. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, we know that uh, the E0, the E is related to, to the free uh, Gibbs energy by this equation that we know very well. In this case, uh, N is uh, 2. F is the Faraday constant. And uh, since uh, the free energy difference for water formation for hydrogen oxygen is 229 kilojoule per mole. If you make this calculation, you have that this E is equal to 1299, 123. <coughs> uh, of course, under current flow, of course, we have this decay due to the What I've done here. Okay. 
Okay. Now, we have various types of fuel cell, and they vary according to the type of the electrolyte that they're using and to the type of uh, the operation temperature. So we have this various type where alkaline fuel cell, because they use uh, alkaline electrolyte, and the acronym is AFC, and they work around 80 degrees. Then they have polymer membrane fuel cell, PEFC, and they work around 80 degrees. Phosphoric acid fuel cell, PAFC, 180 degrees. Molten carbonate fuel cell, MCFC, 600 degrees. Solid oxide fuel cell, SOFC, 800 degrees C. Okay? So you see we have various types. I think we will most concentrate on this one. And if you have time, maybe something on this. But this is the most important now. <clears throat> just, let me just briefly show the scheme of all this. This is the alkaline fuel cell. So here you have uh, an electrolyte which is formed by OH ions. But you see that uh, the situation is uh, similar to that I have described before. We have hydrogen coming here being oxidized, electrons going over there, and here we are reduction of, of oxygen, which is formation of water. And the conduction is due to hydroxyl ions. Okay? This is called alkaline fuel cell. This is where the first fuel cell produced, in a way. Then you have a phosphoric acid fuel cell. This, they are using uh, concentrated uh, phosphoric acid as electrolyte, that means that uh, you have a proton conduction here. So this is very it's typical proton conduction fuel cell. Again, hydrogen here with uh, oxidation. Then uh, uh, formation of uh, <coughs> uh, HPU, which goes here, react with oxygen, which is uh, reduced with the formation of water. And, uh, of course, electrons which pass through the... <coughs> To the, to, the, to the load. This cell is a uh, phosphoric acid fuel cell, operates about, as I say, about <coughs> some temperature, and uh, it will use as a stationary for, uh, uh, for supporting maybe electricity in houses, so forth, but it's not so popular anymore. So is molten carbonate fuel cell. This, this uh, Electrolyte is a molten solution of lithium carbonate and sodium carbonate. So this operates very high temperature, and you see that now in the electrolyte which conducts is this anion, which is produced when we molt these mixtures. So at the end of process, we will have oxidation of hydrogen, which reacts with uh, CO3 to form uh, water and CO2. Then, at the cathode process, we will have uh, oxygen which re uh, reacts with CO2 to form uh, CO3 minus minus. So, uh, <coughs> this is the operation. This also is not uh, very much used anymore. Finally, the SOFC is uh, using as electrolyte, solid electrolyte. It's the yttria stabilized zirconia. We discussed about this electrolyte last year, is an oxygen conducting electrolyte. So we have oxygen ions. And uh, <coughs> the anode process is the oxidation of hydrogen, so we form uh, H+, plus, while the cathode process is a reduction of oxygen with the formation of this O-. minus minus. And O-- minus minus arrive here to form water. Mm -hmm. You may ask why we want to use fuel cell which operates at 1,000 degrees. Of course, not in a car, but there may be some application here. Then, this is, uh, uh, this is I, I left that for, uh, as the last one, because it's the one that we will concentrate most. And you see that here, the, prob the, the, the situation is that this is a particular uh, um, uh, system because it's using as electrolyte a membrane. So this one is a membrane. 
is a polymer having some groups. We will see that in the, in the taste, which conducts protons. So what will happen here, if we have hydrogen coming here, hydrogen is reduced with the formation H+. Plus. This H+, plus is conducted through the membrane, as we will see, and arrives here, but we have oxygen, which is oxidized and form water. Operation about 80 degrees C. Uh, we will go into the taste in the next lecture on this, but you see already, as I said before, that we have a lot of problems here because, first of all, now we know that to make this operate, we must use very expensive material, like platinum. We also see here that we have to assure the, the contact between uh, electrons, uh, protons, and gas. And so we have to, to construct this cell in a special way. And also you see that we form water here, okay? So we will see that water is necessary for some operation of the battery, uh, of the fuel cell, but only to a certain extent. So also water management is a problem here, a lot of problems. The intensity versus years. There was some interest in fuel cell back in the 70s because the first uh, missile, uh, no missile, sorry, no missiles, <laughs> the first uh, shuttle, uh, I mean uh, space operation, space sh ships use uh, fuel cell for energy aboard and also for producing some water. But then, uh, then in 1996, a first, uh, a first um, vehicle with a fuel cell, you see it's written hydrogen here, came out, very big and bulky because this vehicle used a very big uh, hyd hydrogen tank. But there was some interest, you see the, the interest is uh, increasing, but the, the development is still very, very little. And it is expected that uh, the development of fuel cell will become very high when we can use fuel cell for uh, cars. But you see in this slide that uh, back in the in the 90s, maybe 96, people were thinking that uh, fuel cell could be in the market by 2004. Pass, no fuel cell in the market. And uh, of course the cost of the fuel cell is also supposed to go down as you increase the production. But uh, the, the, then there was another some interest because they thought that fuel cell can be used as uh, for driving this computer, or maybe a, a cellular phone, no way, to my opinion, but uh, the idea, and also to, to, you know, to, as I say, to produce ele electricity in some building. Now, people say that, uh, people said in 2004, that 2004 will be too early, but certainly by 2010, there will be a lot of cars on the, on the road. I think 2010 is now, and I don't see any cars in the road. So the problem is still there. Why this happens? Because uh, we have some problems. The problems are technical, in the sense that we have to make this fuel cell working. The cost, as I say, and of course, also infrastructures. What that means, uh, E is missing, is infrastructure. means that if you want to convince somebody to drive uh, a fuel cell, you must have the same facility that you have now. Now, when your car stops, you can go to the gas station and refill it in three minutes. So you need infrastructure to let hydrogen car to be refilled. It is not existing anymore. Then, of course, you have to convince people that hydrogen is not dangerous, does not explode, and then, of course, you have to set some regulation. I ended up with this, which is a joke in Italian. These guys say, <coughs> one day the cars will be powered by water, and the other guys say, yes, and the water will cost double than gas, because this always happens, okay?